What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another player review slash breakdown. Today we're taking a look at the player of the week, European Club Championship player. So we've already done and covered the worldwide player of the week. This is a very, very interesting pack, lads. You've got some really nice players in here, so I definitely recommend checking it out. You've got McTominay, super sub center forward. Giroud, who can play in, in goals. You can see there, it's a really cool picture of him. So kind of unique, right? With the European Club Championships, you have three end game level players, in my opinion, and you have three players that you can base your team around if you are starting off. You've got a couple of mid game players, Dan Byrne, I've slept on him for a while. He's an absolute giant, probably the only collar killer in the game. He's a beast of a player, so he would be a good spin to get as well if you want to go for him. He can play center back, an absolute colossus at the back. Brilliant stats all around. You can't train up these players. So we're going to take a quick look at them. I've already spun for Bruma for a tutorial video that I was doing to get your free spin. But yeah, there's always probably about five or six players in this that are just not worth it in my opinion. And the rest, there's always one that is worth spinning for, right? So if we were to start off here with this guy as your center forward, you know what you're getting with him. Pace and power is a super sub. That kind of changes things. Doesn't have a real face as well. That might throw people off. But the balance is a bit of a killer on this one and the tight possession. As a goal poacher and a small base goal poacher, I would definitely say um, that Aubameyang is better in the other selection if you wanted to spin for it, right? I'd also say the same about Thomas Muller. Thomas Muller, in my opinion, depending on how you play the game, right? He just is too slow. He's not quick enough for that, a lot of formations. If you're playing possession, yes, you can do him as a whole player and you can have him in that kind of Bruno Fernandes role that you can just sit him in the middle, sit him in the pocket and just be able to shoot uh, from long distance and also be able to curl shots in. He's got brilliant player skills. He's also got captaincy track back and pinpoint crossing. Um, which is very unique, as well as acrobatic finishing and heading, so he kind of has it all, right, um, but he is down as a whole player, a lot of his cards have been dummy, dummy runner, his attack and awareness is where his strength lies for his amazing runs into the box, right, he has caused me a lot of problems when I've played against him, I've just never given him a really good crack, and he's kind of like love him or hate him, some people absolutely swear by him, some people just do not like him whatsoever, right, um, so he is a fairly interesting player to have as well, Pedro, not as fast as he probably would like uh, because he is 36 years of age now. But I mean, 86 acceleration at that age is still phenomenal. And again, you've got that super sub. You've got a lot of these players that are impact players. That's what you have with these. So these are players that I would be springing in off the bench. And when, once you kind of put a player into an impact player tier, right? And you're saying like, right, I'm not going to be starting Pedro. I'm not going to be starting Muller. But when they are impact players and they become those impact players, they take on a different list and they take on a different category. And that is why I would recommend getting a couple of these guys if you do not have any super subs yet. Just your average winger apart from that. We also have Bruma. He's just your average winger as well with blister and pace. Balance is a bit of an issue and his tight possession, but his inconsistent form, we actually spun him. So we'll test him out on live stream. We also have Sanchez. We saw this guy play the other night against Manchester United. Uh, I did anyway, I don't want to talk about it, but yeah, this guy is a Colossus, really high defensive stats, he can play as a CB, I think he was down as a DMF last year in the game, or one of his cards was anyway, but he's got fairly decent stats apart from the skills, which are a bit of a letdown, but again, an average enough player, right? Now, I also want to say, lads, as well, that eFootballDB have done an update, and they are looking for me to pass on a bit of feedback, right? If you do use this DB, they are trying to make it, there's a massive update in the mix, but they have made the homepage a little bit easier to navigate, that you can just go through each player and see which player comes. So I would say that if you are going for any of these players, you know, go in and have a look at them, and then you can also do the training guides as well, but we will get a bit of feedback for that if you guys can help out in the comments below and on the live stream. But anyway, right, we do have another couple of players to get through here, right? So we've covered all of those. Dan Byrne, you've got the height, you've got the pace um which is very unusual for a player this tall to be this you know physically fast and athletic um and strong and stamina and he can also play a bit so i do like that pass as well but it's gonna all be about these five five players here i'd even put zubel sub zubel dia in here right as a very good center back he's just your mobile center back right so a lot of people ask me what's the best mobile um a versatile center back partnership should you play two destroyers should you play a build-up i've said forever if you're playing five at the back or three at the back have a really tall you know strong physically strong but slow center back 
uh, such as Van Dyke, Varane, De Ligt, any of those in the middle, and then have your two versatile, like Timber, Kounde, this guy, uh, Reinildo, Tommy Yasu, right? Obviously, the higher you go up with the legends and stuff, you will be able to mix and match and have players that will be able to do it all. But if you are starting it off, I would definitely recommend two versatile uh, with a five at the back or a three at the back, or else one versatile, one strong, one physical one uh, as a partnership, right? So he is pretty decent. We also have Ter Stegen. There's been a lot of different versions of Ter Stegen out. He is an amazing guy goalkeeper he's really started to grow on me since I bought the Barcelona pack and you know what you're getting all you need with goalkeeping lads is if the goalkeeper is higher than 190 you don't need to have his reach more than 90 okay so this guy is just on that cusp when he gets the boost with the manager boost he's going to have a 91 goalkeeper reach 93 awareness and 95 reflexes which is incredible he's just the right height as well if he was lower than 185 I would say that the reach and the jumping needs to be a little bit higher because you can't train these players I probably wouldn't recommend spin but he is kind of an end game level uh, goalkeeper if you don't have an epic right Foden would be the same he's down as an AMF attacking midfielder a uh, creative playmaker a bit disappointed with his speed and stamina here because there has been other versions of Foden where you can get his speed up a lot better but he does have track back it's a more defensive kind of option brilliant ball control I would say as an attacking midfielder I would be using Foden strictly as kind of like a center midfielder attacking midfielder hybrid kind of like Pedri that is able to use sub tactics and get on the ball and just mess with your opponent's head that you could start Foden left wing and then you could put him to the right side of center mid. So if he's man marking you, which a lot of people are doing lately, you can drag his opposition players all over the pitch, right? So another interesting player. We also have Barella and Vinicius, right? So we've got center forward Vinicius. This guy is an absolute beast. He's got one touch pass as well as true passing. So a very interesting card. You've got Barella with way to pass. You've got Vinicius with one touch pass as the player skills unique to these cards, right? So Vinicius is a very, very interesting one. I think he's one of the best wingers in the game, but this card specifically as a goal poacher is incredible because he's got every single thing that you could possibly want on a card that has like very low passing, but he has one touch pass. His dribbling is brilliant. His tight possession is a little bit low and his balance is low compared to the other cards on the market. But because you're playing him through the middle, this guy is going to be like Sun. This is how you play him as a goal poacher, right? I would not play this card on the left side of the, the field unless you're playing him left mid and then sub tactic uh, changing it up into center forward. But what I would usually do is, is kind of mess around with things like that. He's got unwavering form, brilliant player skills. And of course, that one touch pass is killer for a card like this. It's brilliant on this card. 90 finishing, 93 acceleration, 89 dribbling. They're all going to get boosts with the manager. If you've got Ten Hag, he's going to get a boost to his speed. If you've got Xavi, you're going to get a boost to ball control. So you can get that ball control up to 90 which is going to make a big difference on this card. Very, very nice card. And then last but not least, we do have Borella. Now, I'm going to apologize to all fans of Borella. For people that were saying to me for months and months and months, Borella was the best box-to-box -box in the game. I still think Goretzka was the best ever. And I think it's between Borella and Bellingham now. This is kind of the meta at the moment with Borella for, you know, leaving uh, epic players and legends and boosters out of it. This guy is phenomenal. Excellent, excellent ability on the ball excellent aggression like you're going to have a player here that's very unique you're going to have low pass at 90 with the manager boost you're going to have aggression at 90 with the manager boost you're going to have speed and acceleration nearly at 85 you're going to have huge balance balance and stamina you're going to have brilliant ball control for a center mid and of course you've got those tackling and defensive engagement stats as well as having interception slide and tackle acrobatic clearance for a small guy is huge and then defensively even uh, fighting spirit is huge and going forward, you have uh, one touch pass and long range shooting. So he can kind of do it all. I still maintain that Goretzka was at the time the best center mid, but this guy is a phenomenal card. Is he better than other versions of him? That's up to you, but some people mightn't have been playing the game that long. So if you are a newcomer, check out some more of my videos. If you are a regular, we will be back streaming quite soon today. So I hope you guys check it out and we'll have a bit of carnage in the, in the chat as usual. So until next time, lads, don't forget to subscribe. That is it for the Player of the Week breakdowns. Obviously the top picks are, are them three boys there. It's fairly easy to see, but Dan Byrne also is a phenomenal pick. If you do get him, plays way above his stats. And I've seen a lot of clips with him and played with a lot of co-op with him that he's just been a monster at the back. So that is it for me. I will talk to you in a bit, lads. Peace.